concerns over power abuse in today's religious authority. Malaysian tour group arrested in Hong Kong. Welcome to the evening edition of News on 2. I'm Adrian Seat. The Sultan of Perak, Sultan Nazrin Shah, today expressed concern over the abuse of power, arrogance and high-handedness of certain religious officers and religious institutions in their enforcement activities, which tarnish the good name of Islam. He said activities such as interrogation, which contained elements of torture and abuse, implemented for the purpose of enforcement of regulations for the safeguarding of Islam, had only smeared the sanctity and good name of the religion. Kata-kata penghinaan yang diungkapkan dan tindakan-tindakan berunsur dendam, ukutan, tangkapan, tahanan dengan kaedah soal siasat yang mengandungi elemen-elemen siksaan dan deraan telah memberi imej persatuan negatif terhadap cara Islam diamalkan di negara. Sultan Nazrin Shah said there was a need to review the modus operandi of propagation as well as methods used to address various religious issues, especially amongst the younger generation. The Sultan said Islam should be safeguarded and promoted through a prudent, polite and honourable approach without coercion, pressure, violence and disgraceful acts. Sultan Nazrin Shah spoke at a Perak level Maulidur Rasul celebration in Ipoh today. The event was also graced by the Raja Permaisuri of Perak, Tuanku Zara Salim. In Kedah, the Sultan of Kedah, Sultan Salihuddin Ibni Almarhum Sultan Badlisha and the Sultan of Kedah, Sultana Maliha Tengku Arif, attended the state-level Maulidur Rasul celebration at Dewan Sri Negeri Wisma Daru Aman in Alusta. In His Majesty's speech, Sultan Salihuddin wants all Muslims to unite under one banner for the sake of racial and religious harmony as well as the country's well-being. Sultan Salihuddin also presented the Toko Pendakwa Award to a lecturer at the Centre of Language, Civilization and Philosophy Studies, Literature and Science College, University Uttara Malaysia, Dr. Shukri Ahmad, 53. His Majesty also presented the Toko Ibu Mitali, Exemplary Mother Award to Siti Aisha Ahmad, 75, and the Toko Imam Award to the Imam of Sungai Pase Mosque, Sungai Petani Ali Ahmad, who is 69. Also present at the celebration were Menteri Besar Dato Sri Ahmad Basha Mat Hanipa and his wife. In Johor, the Tunku Makota of Johor, Tunku Ismail Sultan Ibrahim, led a parade of 77 contingents for about 2 kilometers from Bangunan Arkit Majlis Amanarayan or Mara to Masjid Jamek Banda Kluang as part of the celebration in the state. The parade, which also saw the presence of Menteri Besar Dato Muhammad Khalid Nordin, drew more than 5,000 participants. They walked the distance to the mosque where the Kluang district Kadi, Muhammad Taufik Shamsuddin, gave a talk on Kasih Nabi Mbawaka Syurga. In Malacca, more than 7,000 participants involving 123 contingents from the various government agencies and the private sector, voluntary organizations, institutions of higher learning and schools join in the Maulido Rasu Parade at the Hang Tua Stadium. In this year's celebration, a theme, Kesatuan Umah Kesejahteraan Negara, the parade was led by Chief Minister Dato Sri Idris Harun. They walked for about 5 kilometers from the stadium to Dataran Pusat Islam Majlis Agama Islam Malacca, Bukit Palah, while reciting the Slawan for the Prophet. In Selangor, Raja Muda Selangor, Tengku Amir Shah joined about 4,700 people involving 94 contingents in the Maulido Rasul Parade from Section 13 Mini Stadium to the Malawati Stadium in Shah Alam. Tengku Amir Shah also presented the Maulido Rasul Award for the state-level recipients, including Immigration Director General Dato Sri Mustafa Ali, 58, who received the Khalid Al Walid Award. Saya bagi pihak Jabatan Imigrasi Malaysia menerima anugerah ini bagi melaksanakan tugas-tugasan kita dan sebagai satu uh, pemangkin, sebagai motivasi atas tugas-tugas yang insyaAllah kita akan laksanakan secara berterusan. 
Apart from his post as the head of the immigration department, Dato Sri Mustafa is also involved in academic activities, as he is also a member of UNICEL's Academic Advisory Board. Other state-level Maulido Rasul Award recipients include a Chief Shari'i Judge, Dato Mukuyidwin Ibrahim, who received the Uma Abdul Aziz Award, Independent Preachers, Datin Amina Zakaria, who received the Saidatina Khadija Award, and Muhammad Shahari Abdullah, who received the Imam Al-Ghazali Award. Tengku Amir Shah also presented the Saidina Ali Award to 17-year-old student Faris Akmal Aminuddin of Sekolah Agama Menengah Persekutuan in Kajang. In other news, more arrests will be made following the discovery of almost 15 million ringgit in a Kota Kinabalu hotel and apartment as a result of a recent prostitution ring raid. Immigration Department Director General Datuk Sri Mustafa Ali said the task force investigating the case has launched a manhunt for the people behind the ring. Kita teliti dari segala, dari segi, uh, segala aspek dan beberapa tindakan uh, masih dan sedang dijalankan dan ada lagi yang akan kita uh, laksanakan khususnya melibatkan uh, mereka yang sedang kita uh, cari dan dalam masa yang terdekat semalam saya dah maklumkan dalam masa terdekat kita akan uh, menahan beberapa orang lagi Datuk Sri Mustafa said this when met after he was awarded the Khalid Al Walid Award at the Selangor State Level Malido Rasu celebration held at Stadium Melawati in Section 13 Shah Alam today. He was commenting on the department's Obgaga raids, where almost 15 million ringgit had been seized as on Wednesday. The haul is the biggest ever recorded by the department. Most of the cash was found in drawers, boxes, and under the bed in Kota Kinabalu Hotel Room, while the rest were found in an apartment unit nearby. The apartment unit belonged to one of the three men arrested, aged between 30 and 50, including a Filipino. The man's 46-year-old wife was also arrested in the same apartment unit in Jalan Api Api. Six members of a sightseeing group from Malaysia have been arrested by customs officers at Hong Kong International Airport for attempting to carry nearly... 2 million ringgit worth of ketamine into the city, the first of such arrests in a decade. In a news conference on Thursday, officials said around 8.3 kilograms of ketamine was found wrapped around the bodies of four of the six travellers who had flown in from Kuala Lumpur. The six male Malaysian travellers aged between 18 and 28 were intercepted for inspection at the airport's customs clearance counter following their arrival from Kuala Lumpur on Wednesday. Officials briefing reporters said that drug dealers believe that members of a tour group would receive less scrutiny at a control point on entering the city. On Thursday afternoon, the six Malaysian men were being held for questioning and had not been charged. Hong Kong carries a maximum penalty of life imprisonment and a five million Hong Kong dollar fine under the Dangerous Drugs Ordinance. In a bid to efficiently manage flood relief centres, the government has appointed several departments to be in charge of each centre. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department, Dato Sri Shahidan Kasim, said several departments and agencies had already been tasked to manage the welfare of evacuees during and after the flood. Ketua Jabatan akan mengetuai satu tempat perpindahan. Jabatan-jabatan utama ini mereka akan mengetuai tempat perpindahan yang besar. Sekontohnya adalah sekolah rantai panjang dua akan diketuk, akan beberapa angkatnya adalah uh, bomba. Kemudian uh, bagi bunuhan dan juga pengalang kubur, beberapa angkatnya adalah rela. Polis dilatih. Speaking in Kota Baru, he stated that all personnel and assets were prepared and on standby to help residents affected by the floods. Meanwhile, the Director General of a National Disaster Management Agency, or NADMA, Dato Abdul Rashid Harun, gave the assurance that NADMA will help alleviate any lack of logistical needs and will address any arising issues at the centres. Saya memohon kerjasama daripada semua agensi dan juga semua ketua komuniti untuk melaporkan apa juga kekurangan-kekurangan yang ada kepada 
pegawai daerah ataupun kepada petugas yang ada di situ untuk dilaporkan kepada kepada kami. Jadi kami akan sampai membantu. Two climbers who were stranded on Gunung Santubong in Sarawak yesterday had been found. Now, Kuching Fire and Rescue Department Chief Kurung Suen in confirming the incident said the pair had been stranded for almost five hours at level seven of the mountain before they were rescued. Kurung added that a team of 20 fire personnel was rushed to the scene to search for the climbers upon receiving an emergency call. It was found that the pair who were travelling with another four climbers had separated from the group as they were descending from the mountain. The other four members from the group had reached the foot of the mountain at around 8.30pm yesterday. Bad weather along with a slippery and dark trail posed a challenge to the rescue team. However, they managed to find the duo at around 10.17pm. The victims were allowed to go home after receiving treatment from the fire medical team. The Royal Commission of Inquiry, RCI, tasked with probing Bank Negara Malaysia's foreign exchange of forex losses in the 1990s may not carry legal powers, but its findings do carry weight. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi, in saying this today, added that the RCI had recommended investigations to be carried out against certain individuals and the police would carry out its probe. Mereka mencadangkan beberapa personaliti yang dinamakan di dalam laporan itu supaya dilakukan catatan mengikut undang-undang kanun jenayah atau undang-undang lain yang berkaitannya. Sebagaimana yang dinyatakan oleh Ketua Polis Negara, pihak polis khususnya Jabatan Siasatan Jenayah Komersial akan melakukan siasatan jika terdapat permintaan secara resmi. He said this when met in Putrajaya today. RCI Secretary Dato Dr Yusof Ismail, who is the Finance Ministry's Strategic Investment Division Director, had lodged a report at the Putrajaya Police Headquarters yesterday. Inspector General of Police. Tan Sri Muhammad Fuzi Harun was quoted as saying that the police have set up a task force to investigate the case. The RCI, in its 524-page report tabled in Parliament on Thursday, stated that Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim, who was then the finance minister, had misled the government and concealed the actual losses suffered by Bank Negara. And that concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, concerns over power abuse in today's religious authority. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Adrian Seat.